Hey guys, thanks for joining. Got a video here I'm going to show a start to finish on a three bedroom home septic installation. So here we are just getting started on the curtain drain. So this is basically like a French drain that goes around the lateral field. And what it does is it works to collect water before it hits the lateral field. And by water, I mean like groundwater or rainwater um, that could, you know, flood out the lateral field. So these are typically required on slight sites that have slopes as well as sites that have, um, you know, clay soils or, or soils that don't drain very well. And so in order to keep groundwater away from your lateral field, which is treating your effluent, um, they install these curtain drains on the uphill side of the field. And that way it'll intercept clean groundwater and uh, discharge it b below the system rather than infiltrating clean water into the effluent system. This system here was 32 inches deep. You can see I'm checking it with a laser level as I go over a kind of hump or hill here. Um, so I just needed to maintain that depth and that was specified by our county uh, to be a, a certain depth lower than the chambers that we're gonna install later. curtain drain here in this county gets backfilled with pea gravel so that's just a small um, like river rock type round gravel that allows water to flow through it pretty quickly and then that pipe that we laid in the bottom was a perforated pipe and then after you get finished filling the trench up with pea gravel to within four inches of the top of the trench then you place straw a layer of straw on top of the pea gravel before you backfill it with dirt and the point of that is so that that straw acts as like a vegetative barrier where dirt will not uh, clog up all the um, pea gravel stone. This is the final segment of the curtain drain. We actually transition from the black corrugated piping that accepts the water into the green um, solid pipe that does not have holes in it. And it goes, and on this project, it's gonna daylight out into that pond out there. And again, this is just accepting and flowing clean groundwater, not any effluent, um, you know, septic water from the lateral field. Here we are starting digging for the tank. So the tanks that I use are concrete uh, precast tanks. They're about six foot tall. They're about five foot wide and eight foot long. So I dig the hole a little bit larger than that just to make sure that you know I'm not too small and the truck's gonna be waiting on me there. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm digging you know each, each outside line of the tank hole and then I come back and dig out the center. Um, learn that from another guy I watch and uh, seems to work really well. You can keep your straight lines on either side and then that middle is really easy to dig out. Um, so recommend that to other folks. Didn't catch it on film, but we did get down there and rake up the bottom a little bit, made sure it was flat. And uh, I'm using an iDig grade control on this excavator, so it does a really good job of, um, you know, keeping you on grade as you're digging. So we had to do, you know, very little work at the bottom of that hole. Here I'm starting to dig the lateral lines. So these 
chambers are only being installed 14 inches deep. It's a pretty shallow system here. Uh, that was due to some hard clay soils at about 26 inches deep. Um, I'm using again the iDig grade control here, so I don't need a rod man in the hole. Um, it, it worked really well for me. Um, after I get the trenches dug out that 14 inches, the my uh, helper there is, is raking out the bottom of the trench a little bit, just kind of smoothing it out, and then setting the chambers, and they interlock, each chamber interlocks into the next one. And as you can see, these trenches start to curve a little bit. So I'm curving, you know, off to the right here. So what that's doing is that's following the contour of the ground. So if I were to go straight, the chambers would get deeper. So I have to follow this curve so that they always stay 14 inches deep. Unfortunately, I forgot to move the camera for setting the tank. I would have liked to have gotten that a little bit closer, but it was in the field of vision here, so I zoomed in and showed us setting the tank and get it in the spot where I wanted it and make sure it's level. Here I'm backfilling the outlet side of the tank and tamping that dirt in a bit with a bucket, and then we'll dig out at a 2% slope from this tank opening which is the outlet of the tank over to our distribution box, which is going uh, about 20 feet behind the machine. So again, just kind of digging this on grade, making sure that it's sloping the right direction towards the distribution box. Here Austin's installing the pipe from the tank to the distribution box. So usually the first 10 foot out of the tank I use a scheduled 40 PVC pipe and that just uh, is a little bit stronger pipe coming out of that tank there where there may be some settlement. And then uh, he glues the effluent filter on the inside of the tank and uh, that has the baffle tee on it as well. This is all the distribution leader piping. So this comes from the distribution box and the three pipes will go out and connect to the three lines of the lateral field. This is all SDR 35 pipe um, with bell fittings glued and um, they just either 45 or 90 into the inlet cap of each lateral line. All right, so we got the tank in, got the line to the D-box and downed all the lateral lines. I was feeling pretty good about this over the weekend until I did some reading and talked to the inspector, but I backfilled and bedded all this pipe with uh, pea gravel that I had left over from the curtain train. And I thought that'd be nice, give that pipe some nice support and everything throughout here. And all the way down the trench, I don't know, probably 100, well, 75 feet down that way. And it turns out the inspector and the regulations do not like having pea gravel in these trenches because if there's a leak somewhere in these lines, it'll all go down to the bottom line and they won't be able to spot, you know, where the leak is. So rework is the uh, worst kind of work, but that's what I'm about to do. So I was pretty upset with myself about having to do this rework. Um, you know, on Friday afternoon when we did this install and backfilled that with all that extra pea gravel, I was trying to hurry and get finished just because it was supposed to freeze real bad over the weekend and I wanted to get everything done and locked in so that after the inspection I could just go ahead and backfill. 
So I was just working quick and I should have taken a moment to stop and, you know, think a little bit harder and maybe read the uh, regulations or call the inspector before I just started backfilling all that stone. But um, anyway, is what it is. Good learning lesson. You know, if you think about it, it, it definitely makes sense that, um, you know, any water that gets in there could leach through that uh, pea gravel and make it down to the bottom line. So they want just native dirt backfilled over this area and to, to settle around these pipes and that way, um, you know, if there were to be a leak, it wouldn't percolate so quickly down to the bottom line and they're hoping it would pop out of the ground, you know, closer to the leak, either by the D-box or tank or wherever it would, you know, a broken pipe or whatever. And, uh, you know, be able to find the leak closer to the source rather than having it all drained down to the bottom line. So once I got all the pea gravel dug out, I went ahead and raked the bottom a little bit, made it a little bit flatter, then uh, went ahead and plate tamped all this dirt in place here, and just to give it a nice solid bottom so that any of these pipes wouldn't you know, settle. Thankfully, Austin had done a great job putting these pipes together, the distribution piping. So I didn't even have to cut or rework any of those pipes. I was able to pull them out of the distribution box and pull them out of the uh, lateral lines. And you can see here, I'm just getting them back in place and checking to make sure all those uh, joints are still in good condition. And like I said, Austin did a good job getting those cut and fit to length and, and glued and um, making some nice runs there. All right, all the speed levelers are in and pointed straight up so the hole's in the bottom. Looking pretty good so far. So this one's just starting to touch, so I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. The water is right at the crest of all three of them.
All right, well, we just got finished up with inspection. Everything passed good. He checked grades and everything, was liking it. Obviously got all the pea gravel out. Gonna use that to backfill some of the chambers, which will give a little bit more storage volume around the chambers. And uh, go ahead and start backfilling this whole system in. So I'm using a lot of the pea gravel here that I had dug out of my trenches to backfill the initial uh, edges and corners of the chambers and that extra pea gravel alongside the chambers will one give it a little bit more volume there for effluent but also go ahead and uh, make that easier to pack in along the sides of the chambers to give them proper support before pulling all the other dirt on top of them. You need to be really careful backfilling around the D-box. You know, I was stomping in and putting a lot of dirt in by hand around that. And then after I did that, I went ahead and poured some more water in there and checked the speed levelers just to make sure it was good before I went ahead and did the final backfill over the D-box. After I get finished pulling dirt over all the chambers with the excavator, I take the skid steer, just kind of go up and down on the lines and you know clean up the edges and pick up any loose uh, bits of dirt and just make everything clean up. Then I leave the chambers to settle and all the dirt to settle over top of the chambers for six months. After that six month period is done, then you can come back and regrade this and level this out like you've seen me do in some other videos. Um, typically a Harley rake works pretty good for getting all this yard cleaned up and having a nice finished product.